So yes, uh, so this session is about exactly that, all that you need to know in order to get Azure certified. So my name is Tiago, and by the way, that's um, a picture of my hometown. I'm from Lisbon, Portugal, uh, and you have all my information here. So you have my Twitter handler, Tiago Costa PT. I usually share tons of stuff on, on Twitter. So if you want to follow me, please do. I share stuff around Azure and also about Azure certifications. Uh, then I'm an MVP for Azure Regional Lead. I'm an also a Microsoft Certified Trainer, and I help Microsoft. So I'm one of the members of the Certification Council member. We are a very small team, um, and I'm not a Microsoft employee, but I help them with some uh, information and some feedback about the certification program. What will be our agenda for today? So we're going to talk about very quickly what is Azure today, how important is Azure in the world today, then we're going to talk about how Microsoft builds a certification program. Then we're going to focus on the certifications on Azure. What certifications are out there? What can or what should you uh, want to achieve in terms of Azure certifications? And then I have a small step, which is four steps to get certified. So some old small tips that um, that I have around around how to get how to get certified. So there you go. So what is Azure today? So Azure today is the second largest cloud provider. Look, I'm not going to give you the speech, the sales speech on this. Tons of regions, tons of fiber, okay? Tons and tons and tons of edge sites. So Azure usually, sometimes it's even closer to you than what you think, because it's not only the main regions, you also have edge, um, edge sites for services like CDN, and things like that that maybe they're even in your hometown okay so this is this is what we have and then why should you care around azure today well for sure you care because you're attending this but there is huge demand from customers it's 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 like nothing that i have seen before in all my career and i already have a few years working with microsoft technologies um there is, but so, so much need for people that are capable of working with Azure. And what better way to show that you're capable with the Microsoft certification? You might not have, you know, years and years of experience, but I will care for you because, you know, you care to take a certification. You care to learn. And that's very, very important for me, at least when I need to hire people for my projects and things like that. And then, of course, look, it's fun to work with. I, I have to say, I'm, I'm very passionate about what I do, but I'm also very lucky because I really do what I love. Uh, so until now, for example, I'm, I'm designing here an architecture for a customer um, and 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 I'm, I'm having fun, to be honest. I hope that my customer is not watching this, okay? But um, and they pay me, which is also nice, okay? Um, and the pay for what you use, and that's a model for the customer that is pretty cool because, well, you don't want to pay for services that you do, you're not using, or you don't want to pay for having, I don't know, let's give a number, 20 servers when you only need two, but you have to have 20, you know, because when you have a peak on the demand, yeah, you need a 20. That's the on-prem world. In the cloud world, we don't have that. We're just going to have two. That's what we need now. And then when we need the 20, or even when we need 30, 40, 50 servers, uh, we will be able to have them. Of course, you need to pay them, but we only pay for what you use, and that's that's the perfect uh, the perfect approach for for all of this. So let's talk about the certifications, okay? So today, basically, we live where we live in a world that is a connected world, and we have all these dots, and everyone is connected. And this is not only for our lives; it's also when we do projects. Like we have a customer, we need to migrate that customer totally to Azure. Well, that's that's a big challenge for customers in a certain dimension. Um, I'm a cloud, I'm a solution architect, and and I basically lead those efforts. But I'm not a very very deep dive person in networking, for example. So I need to interact and bring people from the networking world. Same thing for databases. I'm not like the best person in terms of database. I have a huge background in that, but. I didn't work with it for the last years. 
So let's grab someone from that field. We might have a Java application. I'm not the best person for that, for sure. So let's bring something, someone from that world. So all these connected dots, when we have projects, we today, and we all know this more and more because of the pandemic that we leave, we can have teams that are totally dispersed around the world. And that's great because I can now get the top of the top and getting someone very specific to work in a role that is just networking or just databases, and I will get the best persons to do the job. And with this, okay, we get why Microsoft created and they changed like two, three years ago from a product-based certification, like you were Windows Server 2016 certified and was like that version. Oh, but we're working with 2019. You're not certified on that. Yeah, but I'm certified on the previous version. And that was the world that we lived right now. No, you live in a role world. And this role base is based on your roles that you want to achieve or that you already do. If you're a networking engineer, that's what you want to do. Azure Networking, there is a certification for that. Azure Administrator or Solutions Architect, okay? So that's what we have. And with this, we talk about how Microsoft builds certifications. I think this is, this is important for you to understand certifications a little bit better. There is a, basically a work being done in the back stage that is called a GTA, okay? So it's called a job task analysis. That GTA, Microsoft, basically what it does, it identifies, okay, the roles that are in the market. And they, they, they very early, they said, well, we have an Azure administrator, we have an Azure developer, and we have an Azure solution architect. Those are like the three first roles that you know they came up with. Um, with that done, it's done by subject matter experts. They sit down and they say, what does an Azure administrator, well, let's give the Azure administrator as an example for our, for our session today. What does an Azure administrator needs to do? What he needs to know? And then they do a list of all the things that an Azure administrator needs to do. And it's with that document that we call, by the way, an objective domain that we are going okay, to create. This is what comes out on the exam. This is all the topics on the exam. It's based on that document that Microsoft also creates the Microsoft Learn content because they need to create Learn content for that. It's where they have official courses. It's where other companies like LinkedIn Learning, Pluralsight, and all the other companies from the world, they grab that document and they start to produce content around that because that's what you need to know. And of course, there are exam questions also created based on, based on that. So this aligned learning experiences is something amazing that we have today. So nowadays, what we have is that we have digital skilling like Microsoft Learn, which is free. You don't pay for it. You just go to learn and look, just search for all the content that you have there. And you have amazing content that is pretty good, to be totally honest. You can go to events um, remotely like this, virtually like this event, for example, that has tons of amazing sessions. I was seeing the last two sessions, for example, and they're pretty good, to be honest. They are, we learn a lot. Even people that are super experienced, there is always something, to be totally honest, that we don't work on a daily basis. And we are, oh, that's, that's, that's interesting. You can also attend classroom training. So the traditional classroom training taught by Microsoft certified trainers. Um, it's a model, okay? I, I'm, I'm very into that, to be totally honest. I really love to teach. I also teach people. That's one of the things that I that I do too. And I really love the classroom. I also have videos, okay? So you can also grab videos from LinkedIn Learning or from Plural Site. There is like tons of stuff there. The thing is not everyone learns the same way. So if you prefer videos, great for you. If you prefer attend an event, also great for you. There are people that they prefer classroom training. Same thing, okay? Or you can do a mix, okay? Just a piece of this and a piece of the other one. And I'm sure you will you will ace it. So what we have on the Microsoft certifications. So we have 
three, let's just say, call it levels. It's the fundamentals, the role-based. The role-based are the ones that incorporate the associate and the expert levels, and we're going to understand what they are. And we also have the speciality, which is a very focused on very, very specific roles, okay? So like, for example, Azure for SAP workloads. We have a SAP workload. Hey, great. Uh, we need to run that on Azure. And look, that's specific for the SAP world. So it didn't make sense to create an associate certification for that. Um, definitely not an expert one. Um, so they created this other level, which is the speciality. Fundamentals are what? So fundamental. I tell everyone, start with the fundamentals. Hey, Tiago, but look, I'm, I'm already experienced with Azure. Do you have a Microsoft certification or at least a rules-based certification? And if the answer is, oh, no, it's going to be my first one, start with the fundamentals. Um, it might be an easy certification for you. I'm not going to lie. Sure, it is going to be. But you learn how questions are formulated. You learn how the exam structures are. And all of that, that is going to be super valuable when you take the associate or the expert uh, exam. So that's 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 a great a great way. The rule based, what we have. So we have the associate and the expert uh, levels. And there is one thing that I always love to say is that you're not only going to be tested through questions but you also need to know how to do things, especially on the associate level, not so much on the expert, but also on the expert. But on the, on the associate, usually the exams are, they give you a question, like, like a small scenario there, and now you have to say how you do something. And some of the questions are even with live, okay, an Azure portal, and you really need to do things. It's not just, Okay, doing uh, just answering questions. You know, it's you really need to log into the Azure portal and do something on the Azure portal. And this is how you should test people nowadays. To be honest, this is how you really know if someone knows something or not is by asking them to do it. Okay, so this is what we have in terms of the in terms of the certifications. And if we turn the laser on here, so we have this expert level that we have, and we have the associate level. On the associate level, look, we have the Azure administrator and the Azure developer. I think they are pretty straightforward what they are, right? Creating virtual machines, creating things and resources on Azure, managing the resources on Azure. Developer is, yeah, let's develop, okay, uh, applications. And mainly you're being tested on the exam in C Sharp or Python. You can select one or the other. Um, and it's let's code applications using Azure services. No one is going to test you on how to code. You're not going to be tested on that for sure. It's more on how do you use Azure services. Like, let's give an example, Azure Storage. How do you access an Azure Storage account through the SDK? And how do you store data there, like a PDF file? Right? Things like this. Then we have the security engineer. Okay, so the security engineer, it's a very entry-level certification around Azure security as a whole. Azure AD, we talk about um, basically about the Azure services like, like SQL databases. How do you protect that? Containers, how do you protect containers? Virtual machines, of course, how do you protect um, how do you protect that? So it's pretty cool what you can do with this. Then we have the network engineer. That's a new one, by the way. Okay, that's a very recent one. The exam it is still in beta. It's the AZ seven hundred, uh, and as the name says, it's just the networking component. There's a little bit of overlapping between the network engineer and the networking part of the Azure administrator. So if you already took the Azure administrator with a little bit more effort, you you take the networking engineer. I'm sure you will you will pass. And then, look, we have the expert level that in the expert level, we have two certifications, which is the solutions architect, which is architecting, designing applications, 
to Azure or native cloud applications on, on Azure. And then we have the DevOps, okay? So the DevOps engineer, it's a certification that that's a very special one because it's the only one that has a prereq currently um, that you need to be certified with the administrator or the developer, but I'll, I'll talk about that later. Uh, so there is a prereq. And then this is not just DevOps on Azure, but it has tons of things that you need to know. Um, so it's not just the Azure part, but it's more the Azure DevOps project with repos, with uh, pipelines, okay? So all of that, all of that part. And then we have here the speciality, okay? So we currently have three specialities, SAP workloads, IoT developer, Azure Virtual Desktops. There are the, the three current ones. And I'm sure, look, what you see here, if, if we had the same talk, I don't know, three, four months from now, yeah, this will be different, okay? Definitely, no questions on, on that. So let's talk about specifically on this. So this is another way that I have to show basically the certifications where you can see here that this DevOps engineer, you have this prereq here. But all the other ones, there is no prereq. Even the fundamentals is not a prereq. This is why it is clearly saying they're optional. I recommend you to take it for sure, but it's not something that you need, okay, um, that you need to do. And then look, I have here like learning paths. So this is like the learning path for the Azure fundamentals. And there's like four topics in here. And then we talk about this is the exam, the AZ 900. But now, how do you know this? Okay, there's always that big question that people have is that, oh, Tiago, how do I know that? Okay, let's just, let's just drag here, okay, this. And what is the exam? It's the AZ 900, right? So you just search AZ 900 and you go to this page exam AZ 900, the title of the exam. And let me just put this a little bit bigger so that everyone can see this quite well. And if you scroll down, you have this area, skills measured. And there is a link here that says download something, which is the exam skills measured. And this is a PDF file. You look at this PDF file and look, it has here all the things that you're going to be tested, like literally everything. Because when I showed you, right, just this, and you see there, cloud concepts, it's this part that says here, describe cloud concepts. But then, as you can see, there is like literally tons of small bullet points in, in this. So you really need to know, okay, what it is. This is an easy certification. It's not that, that complex, to be totally honest with you. Uh, but this is what we have, what we have here. Then we have, this is the, um, the administrator one. So we talk about Azure subscription, storage solutions, virtual machines, networking, and identity. If we want to see some of the key points on this one, okay, yeah, definitely Azure AD is a big topic, creating users, groups, devices, multi-factor authentication, and a little bit of Azure AD Connect. Even though Azure AD Connect, we don't clearly talk that much on the exam on this, but you need to understand. Then we talk about governance. We talk about cost management, okay? Tags, role-based access control, policies. And if, if topics like this, I'm saying this and you're like, oh, I'm not getting what Tiago is saying. Well, just study first before you take the exam. It's my, it's my advice, okay? Other stuff, it's around storage, like storage accounts, the import export service, data box, files, backup. And I just have this here as key points. And you know, there is tons of stuff that you need to know, okay? So um, this is why, okay, let me just grab here. We also have the developer that you need to take the AZ-204. That's just one exam and you get certified. And again, tons of topics here. Just search for this, okay, uh, on that part. Then we also have, the solutions architect. So the solutions architect is a little bit different. As you see, there's like two blue boxes here. Yes, there are two exams. So there's a one exam, which is a 303. And there's a second exam, which is the 304. The 303, it's a very do it exam. So it's a very hands on exam, how to do things. And there is a big overlap with the AZ 104, which is the Azure administrator. 
So if you already know the Azure Administrator topics, maybe even already are certified on that, taking the 303 should be more accessible for you. But it's still a, a big exam. There is some, still some things in here that you don't have on the AZ-104, okay? So reach out for the exam objective PDF, check out that, compare, read it, see the stuff that you're already good on it, move on, read the other stuff, because there's always things that you don't know because you don't work with them all the time, which is perfectly valid, perfectly fine. And then there's the second exam, 304. So the 304, it's a design exam. So it's, as the name says, it's not how to do things, it's how should I design things. So it's more like it, like you have get questions like, oh, we have this scenario, what services should you put here? Or do you, should you use private endpoint for this or a VNAT integration, things like that. Okay, so it's more conceptual. Then, then let's do it. How do you get certified? You have to have both exams. A question that comes up all the time. Oh, do I need to do 303 first and then 304? No, it doesn't matter, okay? Just do it the first that you want and then do the, uh, the other one. And when you have the two, you get certified. A normal path for me, yeah, just follow the numbers, okay? 303 first, 304 after. That will be my my choice and that's my recommendation and with this we get to the devops so the devops path as you can see yeah tons of content here same thing check the pdf for all the details and we have this az 400 but a great thing here an important part of this is that there is a pre rack you need to be certified on the Azure Administrator or Azure Developer, okay? So you need to have that certification and take the AZ-400, you get certified. Again, like the same thing, loads of people, sometimes they take AZ-400, they don't get the certification, they kind of complain. Then I tell them, oh, are you an administrator or a developer? Oh, no, you need to have it. So you can take this exam first and then one of the others first. Again, doesn't make sense, but you can do it if you wish. And a question that some, sometimes comes up here is, okay, do I need to take AZ-104 or, Tiago, I took the Azure Administrator, but in a previous version of the exam, like AZ-103, uh, yeah, doesn't matter. It's the certification, not the exam, not how you got it. It's the certification that is the prereq. Got it? So it doesn't matter if you had a previous generation certification, as long as it's the Azure Administrator Associate, you're good to go. Okay. There is there is no problem whatsoever there. So with this, and we have three minutes, two minutes, how do you prepare for a certification? That's that's usually loads of people that question me around this. So I have like a method that is the four steps to get Azure certified, which is pretty, pretty simple, is read the exam objectives. You know, that file that, that I showed you. Um, get training resources, practice, and then take the exam. So let's talk about the exam objectives. We already saw it. So this is the 104. Uh, check this, read all the details of this. And then look, find information around this, um, get training resources. That's usually what I say. In my website, tiagocosta.com, Azure certifications, you have um, basically uh, study guides for each one of the exams. I'm still building for the AZ-700 and, and the latest ones, but just go there and you have like links for Microsoft Learn content. Uh, around around this. There is the Microsoft official courses. There is Microsoft Docs with tons of documentation around the services. There's practice tests. I just put their measure up because it's the official one. There are other providers out there that have amazing practice tests. Um, and then you have LinkedIn, plural site content. And again, look, other providers, okay, uh, out there with, with amazing content. I really didn't want it to put more over there because I was always going to miss one of them. And there's always people that get mad with me because, oh, we forgot about this one. Uh, yeah, sure. And there's even some that I even don't know, okay? 
Step three, practice. Okay? Go to the Azure portal, fire up Visual Studio Code, create PowerShell, Azure CLI command. Look, do things. Okay? That's how you learn. You, 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 sometimes you got to practice question. How do you do this? And you don't know. Yeah, just go to the Azure portal and try doing it. You will learn and now you know the answer. Oh, that's the answer. You, you answer that. You will never forget about that anymore because yeah, now you know how to do. And then fourth step, an important one, take the exam. I was even going to tell you a secret. Before you start step one, yeah, start step one and schedule the exam right away for a further date. Now you have a commitment. That day, you're going to take the exam. You can always postpone it, okay, if you wish. But at least you have like a personal goal. That day, take the exam. Don't be afraid to take the exam, okay? Some people are, oh, I'm afraid of failing. If you fail, what's the problem? Take the exam again. Okay, there is a fee that you need to pay. That's the only bad part of the story. Because, look, I'm not going to lie. All Everyone that is certified and they have like years of certifications in somewhere in their story, they have failed on, a, on an exam. I have failed on an exam. No, no problem in saying that. Okay, just go for it. I'm sure that sometimes you, you know more then you feel that you know when you get to the exam, there's people that pass on the exam with a good score and they were a little bit afraid of taking the exam. Okay, so just, just go for that. Okay, and that's it. Okay, so thank you very much. I think we are on time. My name is Tiago and this is how you get Azure certified.